Good afternoon. This is Rich Nass, Executive Vice President of Open Systems Media and leader of the Embedded Computing Design, Embedded, and IoT franchises here for this week's Five Minutes with Discussion. This week, I will be speaking with Josh Ferguson, who is the founder and lead developer for Glow Labs. Good afternoon, Josh. Hey, Rich. Thanks for having me on. My pleasure. Uh, okay, so folks may not be familiar with Glow Labs, you guys are located in lovely Denver, and you're what I would call an engineering services company, and if I get this right, you help people bring their IoT products to market with the whole engineering side of it, helping them develop the products and the hardware and software. Did I get that right? Yep, yep, that's exactly right. We're a full-service development shop, so clients come to us with ideas, and we'll help them on the initial business plan and um, validity of their idea through hardware engineering, software, we do apps, cloud services, um, and even small run manufacturing. Okay, excellent. So the first thing that comes to my mind when I hear something like that is that a lot of these IoT products, whether they're for home automation or for retail or for some other aspect wearables, it's really hard to tell one guy's product from the next. I know that I have like four or five Fitbit type products and, and they all seem to be exactly the same to me. So from your perspective, well, if, from your customer's perspective, if you have two guys who have similar products and they're both coming to you for help, how do you help them differentiate? Yeah, there's two key areas that we'll focus on when designing a product. The first is to make it very end user focused, um, especially for the wearables and smart home applications. It needs to be extremely easy for the end user to set up and use. It um, needs to be highly reliable. needs to have a long battery life. And it needs to be able to integrate with third-party services like Alexa and Google Home. Um, the Alexa and Google Home is they're probably our most popular request right now is to get that integration with them. Um, the second thing to really differentiate um, the products that we tell our customers is to take a product-as-a-service approach rather than just delivering your product to the customer and forgetting about it. You really need to be involved throughout the whole life cycle. And the best way to do that is be able to offer over-the-air updates to the firmware for the device. Um, so you can add new features. You can put in security patches, future integrations when new products come out, uh, really to extend the life of that product for the customer. So th those are the two ways that we recommend differentiating. The latter sounds like an ongoing revenue stream, or am I just looking at this with a cynical eye? <laughs> no, it can definitely be an ongoing revenue stream. Um, more so, it's to really you know, embrace that, the product and keep your customers happy. Um, my colleague gave me an example. When somebody goes to buy an outlet for their house, an electrical outlet, they expect it to last pretty much for the life of the house. They're not going to be replacing it. But if they go out and buy a smart outlet, they might think, okay, this is going to work for three years or five years, but probably not much beyond that. So being able to future-proof it and keep it current with the existing technology is really key, and being able to do that seamlessly over the air where the customer doesn't even know about it. They just get an email saying, your device is now compatible with this, or it's been updated to do this. Um, is really a key way to get that customer engagement, and it can be an additional revenue stream as well. Well, I'm in that same boat for a little bit of a different reason. I mean, if I install a smart adapter or outlet in my house, I would expect it to last the life of the house. However, because the smart outlet has features that will probably become obsolete in a short amount of time, it will still work as an outlet, but it won't do all the cool things that will be available in three or four years. Is that what you're referring to? Yes, exactly. Um, so, yeah, if you bought a smart device, say, six years ago before Alexa was out, unless that device can be updated to be compatible with it, you're out of luck and you'd have to replace it with something you know, that supports the current um, feature sets and integrations. Well, that's the reason why in uh, my own experience, I'm trying to stay with the folks who I think will still be around in three or four years, like... <laughs> Um, I have an Echo, and you know, I'm assuming those guys will be around. You know, I guess if you buy a Google device, you have that same feeling. But, it, but you have to be careful if you're buying a product from somebody who may not be around in three or four years. 
Exactly, yeah. And that that happened a lot three years ago when the home automation hubs were just taking off. And you know, it seemed that every day there was a new smart hub on the market that would connect to different devices, and they had their own app. And today, most of those companies are gone. They've been bought up or went out of business, and those customers are just left floating out there with devices that aren't supported anymore. Sounds like a good acquisition for us to scoop up one of those companies, take their technology, and make it work with everybody else's technology. I'm game to exactly. floor. Yeah, I'm definitely in for that. Yeah. <laughs> Very good. Um, okay, so just if somebody wanted to get more information about Glow Labs, how would they find you guys? Um, so the best place to start is our website, which is just glowlabs.co. C-O, why C-O? Uh, just for company, and since we're in Colorado, it seemed to be a nice fit. Ah, okay, I'll buy that. All right. Yeah. Well, <laughs> and how long have you guys been around doing this? Uh, so we have been in the smart home industry. We were actually a home automation company um, that started in 2005, and in 2009 we said the products on the market aren't what our customers are looking for, and we're going to start making our own. So we started making our own products in 2009 and selling those, and after a few years of that, we said we'd rather be on the development side rather than the installation and sales side. Um, so we founded Glow Labs with that mentality, and that was back in 2015 that we started Glow Labs. Excellent. Very good. Well, thank you very much for being my guest this week on 5 Minutes With. Yeah, thanks for the opportunity. That was Josh Ferguson. He is the co-founder of Glow Labs, and I'm Rich Nass with Open Systems Media. Hope you have a great day.